and welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. This is local talk radio, Patriots Lament, of course, every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Joining me in the studio, we've got three characters that have been here since the beginning here back in, when did we start this? May, I believe. End of May, when this began, this show began. I'm Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine here on the other side of the microphone. We've got Joshua Bennett from uh, Bighorn Enterprises. We've got Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical. And we've got Dave Giesel from the Campaign for Liberty here in the Fairbanks Chamber. And uh, just in case we get into any borough business today, I do want to point out that both uh, Aaron Bennett and Joshua Bennett are running for borough. And this show has been paid for by Joshua Bennett and Aaron Bennett. Therefore, yes, we are perfectly clear about all of that and all the legalities being taken out of the uh, way. Let's begin. I think we have to say post office box 5678 Fairbanks Alaska 99711. Annika Bennett, chair. There you go. Now now, now we've covered all the legalities here in case APOC wants to wonder uh, why exactly did they get another hour on Saturday? Well, because they paid for it. And and anybody who wants to pay for an hour on Saturday can do the same thing. All right, gentlemen, what do we want to talk about today? Yeah. Uh, congratulations to Steve Floyd. Uh, no, thank you. Had a, had a little baby. That's sweet. Yeah, had another boy uh, last week, actually, a, exactly a week ago during the 10 o'clock hour. My uh, my wife was getting ready to push, and I was uh, right there, uh, not, not only at her side, but I actually had my catcher's mitt and uh, full <laughs> gear on. I was uh, ready to go, and I actually did catch, just like I have for all of my other children. So it's a very good time. Uh, can I can I just say tomorrow being 9/11? Um, I know there are an awful lot of people that that has very deep feelings about the anniversary and about the uh, the way America has changed since September 11th, 2001. Uh, one thing that has just really been bothering me about this weekend is watching what's going on in New York City and in Washington D.C., where they are set, they've set up roadblocks. And they are randomly stopping people and searching their cars and searching the people. And as far as I can tell, there have been no search warrants issued. These people are not being singled out because they meet any kind of criteria of possibly being um, 'er ne'er-do-wells or evildoers. They simply happen to be driving a vehicle somewhere in or around Washington, D.C. or New York City. And and that, for some reason, seems to be a justification for suspending the Fourth Amendment. How do you feel about that? Yeah, well, actually, uh, last night I was uh, on Google News, just kind of checking the news, uh, which is something I did 10 years ago on September 11th. And I remember 10 years ago seeing the news, and I was like, oh, somebody's hacked all these news sites, you know, because obviously this didn't happen. And then I kept on going to more and more, and I was like, oh, you know, damn. But last night was kind of another one of those moments, because last night the head story on Google News was uh, uh, terror threat uh, or, you know, credible terror threat confirmed, um, but suspects are domestic. And I tried to imagine that 10 years ago, right? I, I tried to imagine a paper publishing something about the American terrorist threat and how we need to be kept safe from ourselves. 10 years ago. And it would have been unimaginable, right? If somebody published a story like that, they would have been run out of town. Um, yeah, the roadblocks, we, 10 years ago, even when they passed the Patriot Act, people were saying, this is coming. A, a few like, people, oh, right. right, a few people. But, uh, yeah. Um, but only, the, the, only the crazy people. Only, I mean, the, crazy, that's, only the crazy That's crazy people. talk. You, they're not going to be randomly searching people. Come on. When the TSA came into play and were checking people at the airports, and then some people said, well, they're going to be on the streets here pretty soon. Oh, that's crazy. they got to screen people at the airport. They'll never go roads in the roads and car to car, and now they are. Right. So, yeah. So, I mean, the difference, I mean, 10 years ago on September 10th, um, no one would have even fathomed that. And here we are nine years and, you know, 364 days later, and it's reality. And um, I, that got me thinking about who, who's to blame for that, right? And, you know, basically we're to blame for that. Um, well, we've, we, ex- we've accepted the... We, we've allowed it to happen, mm-hmm. right? And, and we actually even asked for it. I remember, I mean, there's there's these groups uh, that celebrate 9-12, uh, 
Um, and I'm, I'm not going to talk about that in particular, but 9-12 is not, it's a disgusting thing. 9-12 was the day when um, we all got down on our knees and bowed before the God that Americans really believe in, which is the state. We all got down on our knees and asked the state to save us, right? That's what that's what 9-12 is really about. We put the we put the flag out front, and then we asked the state to grope us at the airport. We put the flag out front, and then we sent our 18-year-old boys to go die in senseless wars, right? So is that is that something to celebrate or, or be proud of? You know, we should be ashamed of, of what we've done to ourselves. You're sounding like Ron Paul, man. Well, in a sense, you can say the terrorist won. Mm-hmm. I mean, they achieved a pretty big victory. From If I was looking from their point of view, I'd say they achieved a victory. And we did it to ourselves. Well, and, and you know what? I would have to say, I'll, I'll take it back, uh, rewind even a little further. I don't think, I think the terrorists won, in a sense, before they even struck us. Because America had, had already fallen. If you look historically at the fall of Rome... It wasn't the actual fall of the city of Rome that was the fall of Rome. It was the, the the corruption in the politics. It was the people who were on the public dole. It was the uh, indiscriminate bastardization of the republic. That's what that's how Rome fell, and that's how America fell. It, it was not September 11, 2001, when a couple of towers fell down and our military industrial complex was struck at the heart. It, that was not what caused America to tailspin into despotism. I, I think that the seeds had been sown long before. And if you look at where America was at on September 10th, 2001, <laughs> exactly 10 years ago today, I, I think that America was already defeated because we had already abandoned our, our founders' vision. Am yeah, I, am well, I wrong? No, the, the Patriot Act had already been written by September 10th, 2001. Um, the invasion of Iraq had been planned in the summer of 2001. The Downing Street memos document that. So everything was was there. They're just waiting for an event. And the idea of these, you know, preemptive wars, um, that was done under, uh, under Clinton a few times in the late 90s. So uh, it was all in place. But... You know what allowed it? Uh, you know we can blame oh the, the the elite power structure or some conspiracy or something like that. But that that just shifts the blame. The blame is on us, right? And as long as we sanction this, as long as we as long as we ask for more, right, more war and more of a police state, we're to blame for it, right? So. So all the politics, right, all the, all the oh, this guy, we, we just need to elect this guy. He'll save us from the system. The only people who can save us from the system are ourselves. But, yeah, <laughs> but, but we keep asking for more. We keep asking for more. You know, I, I was thinking about uh, the troops, right? More, twice as many troops have died in the wars than people died in the towers now since 9-11. And that doesn't even, there's hundreds of thousands of guys who have had their arms and legs blown off who aren't dead. But there's certainly, you know, casualties of war. And there's all the guys who have just been changed permanently. You know, they've seen their friends killed or whatever. I mean, I, there's, I'm sure there's millions of veterans out there who have, who are my age. You know, they were 17, 18, 19 on 9-11. And their lives have been fundamentally changed. You know, these guys, they were young guys on 9-11. What did they want? They wanted to go out and chase girls and drive fast cars and, you know, get drunk and do stupid stuff. And the the old cowards in Washington and the old cowards who vote who said we need to go get the terrorists when they said we what they meant was we need to send young people to go die to pursue you know what what we think is the right course they they didn't go right there's no politicians who had who had kids in the military who voted for the war in Iraq or the war in Afghanistan they had nothing to lose 458 Talk is the number. We've got three lines already on hold. Shall we go to the phones, gentlemen? Yeah. All right. 458 Talk, good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hey, this is Carl. Hey, Carl. What's on your mind today? Well, I was I was first thinking of uh, liberty and the definition of liberty to all. That seems to be a phrase that 
popular in the founding of this nation. Um, there may be, and if you break down liberty as being what one, you know, receives from the government, you would you would see some disparities in our present system. But and that would be a good topic of discussion. But as far as, you know, this 9-11 and why we're at war, you know, brought on largely by, you know, radicals and our greatest ally, Saudi Arabia, who their greatest liberty is the money they receive from the price of oil. And, and there are some states like that in our nation, too. But, you know, it, it's... Liberty, I would think, would be a good patriot lament. You know, how is liberty today? Why why do some get free medical, free dental? If you're in the Army, you're going to get your teeth fixed, and then they're going to kick you out probably or something like that. But, you know, there are people in this country now who need to see dentists and... And stuff like that, and get yeah, their teeth. But I, I'm I'm just curious as to how on earth you you can possibly equate getting free medical care with liberty. Well, I'm just saying some receive these liberties from government. It's not like a liberty. Work, it's I mean, if I, they work for government, they get they pay a hundred bucks when they go, and they can get thousands of dollars of work done. Can you define liberty? You know, Char- Charles, can you define liberty for us? I think it's Carl. Carl, is that Carl or Charles? Carl. Carl, can you define liberty? Well, liberty are these these rights of mankind. Like you say, liberty is traveling freely without being stopped. But if everybody is being stopped, then that that's a liberal policy where everyone is getting searched is equal to all. Where now. Now, you can get pulled over today in Fairbanks, Alaska, if someone says you smell and you're you're leaning up against cash register because you got a broken ankle, and then they'll find out, oh, All right. you, you had a few drinks. Have okay, you had a few now. drinks this morning, Carl? <laughs> no. I, All right. So the, uh, the liberty in our, our state is I, I, um, I th- quite, I th- quite descriptive of those who actually... Do you own a dictionary, Carl? What? Well, what's your definition of liberty? My definition... <laughs> definition of liberty Josh, is the absence of the right. state. Josh, go ahead. Say that again. Definition of liberty would be the absence of the state. Regulation. I mean, you say it's okay if we all get pulled over? That means all of us have our liberties taken from us. I mean, it doesn't make it right if, well, everyone's equally getting destroyed. How is that liberty? Liberty is leave me alone, leave you alone, leave everyone alone. Get rid of regulation so free enterprise and industry can thrive right here in this town. So people quit moving to North Dakota where they told the EPA to get lost so they can drill for oil and make dollars. And and what has the federal government done to them because they did that to EPA? Have they moved troops into North Dakota? No. Have they have they removed all of North Dakota's money? I don't think North Dakota needs it. Have they seized their assets? I mean, what 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 has the reaction been from from this giant behemoth government that we all seem to be cow towing toward? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. For, you know, Mussolini uh, de- defined liberty as equality. That's a very good point. Thank you, Carl, for en- enlightening us this morning. We're going to move on. Four five eight talk is the number. Welcome to. Pay-